Good everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this week's video in the Free Math Worksheet series. This week we're uh, tackling questions in another computational algorithm. This week it's going to be addition with regrouping. So last week was the, the first one where we did operations and that was uh, subtraction. So the worksheets this week, the first half of each sheet is a set of these algorithms to complete. The second half is some revision number facts in, the, in addition and subtraction. Now the first couple of worksheets don't have answers that go beyond 99, so the only regrouping that's there will be in the ones column. Uh, the later worksheets have some questions where it will go beyond 99, so there's regrouping of tens. Some questions will have no regrouping at all, and we think that's pretty important. So um, students shouldn't have pages and pages of questions to practice where there's no regrouping because, as I said last week, they can develop buggy algorithms and use an incorrect method that gives them the right answer that will only work if there's no regrouping, and then when they get regrouping they fall apart. So um, you want to be careful of that. So all of these will require students to think about the questions as they do them and uh, realise or work out whether regrouping is required in each example or not. So let's have a look. This is the first time when students are doing this sort of uh, question. It's the first time they've had to use a multi-step process to work out an answer. Now, I should say we could do even simpler ones with a two-digit plus a one-digit. I'm skipping over those. But when they get to this algorithm, they're moving beyond number facts. So when it's number facts like three plus six, we want the students to just go, that's nine, because they've memorized it. But when we get here, we're getting to a question where the numbers are too big, and you know we wouldn't expect anyone to memorize. So there's a multi-step process to carry out. The prerequisites here, of course, are that students have learned their number facts and that they understand what the operation is um, and what it means and how, you know, how we use it in everyday life. Anyway, we're going to start with the ones, of course, because that's the way we do this operation because of the need for regrouping sometimes. Uh, so 6 plus 7 is 13. We're going to write the 3 and then ask a question with our students such as, are there enough ones to make a 10? Uh, do we have more than 9? That sort of question. There's a number of ways you could put it. Now a lot of my students put the one at the top here. I prefer to put it down the bottom. Either way, we're going to be telling our students to put it in the tens column. If you put it at the 1, just be aware that there is a risk that when you get to multiplication questions, students will add it before they multiply and that will give them the incorrect answer. So my preference is to put it here. You can see it is 13 and this 1 is very close to where the answer is, which is really where it belongs logically. Anyway, then we do the 10s. 5 and 3 is 10 and... Uh, sorry, 5 and 3 is 8 and 1 is 9. We could refer to that as 50 plus 30 plus 10, but one of the benefits of using algorithms is that you're only dealing with single digit um, uh, sums at the one time. So that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. There's not, a, as I said, not a very difficult um, operation. With later questions with bigger numbers, so if that was an 8, there would be some more regrouping to do, so there'd be another step, of course, um, and you understand that. So that's all there is for this week. I look forward to talking to you next time.